Hiya folks, welcome to our second video, our uh, second art journaling video for April of 2016. Today we're going to play with two different types of gesso. We're going to use some fluid acrylics on top of the gesso and uh, then we'll use an elegant writer to kind of get these fun circles that are happening in this um, art journal page which is very mixed media kind of abstract based and sometimes I really like to just sit down and do that. I'm starting out with a piece of watercolor paper and a Liquitex Professional Gesso. So the Liquitex Professional Gesso is very fluid. It has lots of liquid to it and it's very smooth um, once it's dry. Uh, depending on what kind of a brush you're using, if you're using a nice soft brush then the paint kind of has a little bit of time to um, level out. I guess I, I could say the thicker and more bristly that your bristles are, then the more paintbrush strokes you're going to get in your background. After the first layer of gesso was dry, then I got out a second gesso. This is um, Blick gesso, and I'll have all the links available for you in the blog post and at the bottom of YouTube. Um, I'm using a palette knife to scrape on the Blick gesso, and the reason is because it's heavier, and I specifically am going for some texture in this layer. So I started by creating a horizon line about a third of the space up my page from the bottom and then I scraped on the gesso relatively thick. And I am right now using one of the Ranger Ink Essentials Heat It tools but it doesn't get quite as hot as some of the other embossing tools and heat tools so I, um, I picked up one of those, it's like a blue um, like a blue heat tool and I used that to really 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 concentrate the heat in the gesso and it's a chemical reaction that's happening the gesso is bubbling up under the heat and it creates this really kind of cool um, it's a texture but it could be like a rocky texture or it could be like the surface of the moon or it could be diseased skin or just like all kinds of weird kind of bubbly things. It is a really great technique that I really enjoy using. Um, it's very simple. It happens quickly. I don't have to wait around for it to happen. And I do want to say that I did a second layer of gesso because uh, I didn't like the texture that had come through the first time. I didn't have enough of it. So I did do two layers of that gesso and it's kind of, you kind of just go with it and see exactly what happens and the more you do it then the better feel you get for it. After all my gesso was completely dry then I got out some deco art fluid acrylics and I'm using those on um, to, to create a really great kind of contrasty color base here. I started with a cold gray I believe it's number three, but I will double check and make sure that I have those names accurate for you. And I use, I put down a couple drops of the fluid acrylic and then I added some water. And what's really great about the fluid acrylics is that they already have such fluidity to them that when you add water, they just spread out so beautifully and they create this kind of almost watercolor feel with them, but it's permanent when it's dry. And so what I really loved about it was that the color kind of sank into the depths of my texture and kind of highlighted the surfaces. And then I picked up a teal fluid acrylic by Deco Art. This time, instead of putting the paint directly onto the page, I put a really thin layer of water across the page. And then I added in a couple drops of paint and then started to kind of spread that around. Just use a little baby wipe to keep my horizon at, uh, nice and crisp. I didn't really want the colors to overlap there. And now I've gotten out some Payne's Gray, and the thing that I really love about Payne's Gray is just how sort of midnight blue it is. It's got these really great tones in it, and as it spreads out, it's really, really quite beautiful. And you'll see here I'm adding it to the wet that my page is already wet from the paint I was working with earlier. I'm adding wet paint to a wet surface, and that really allows it to kind of spread out even more than if I were to put it on a dry surface and then add water. Little drippage is always really great. And then I'm going to use the heat tool and completely dry this surface because I want to continue to build on top of it. So with fluid acrylics, I'm able to get this sort of watercolory feel. 
but because it's acrylic paint, once it's dry, it's permanent, and then I can keep building on top of it with all my other layers. And the top part where the teal is, that's the super smooth gesso. And then the bottom is where we use that heavier gesso by Blick. Now I've gotten out an elegant writer. And I picked this up from a couple other mixed media artists. And you can, you'll can you see what happens. But I'm drawing in some circles. Just very freehand, kind of fun. They're ovally and sketchy. And I did make sure that one went off the page. But I, I did a couple times around, and then I got out a nice, fat, wa um, watercolor round brush, and I'm adding some clean water to, that, to these circles, and it's activating the ink because it's not archival or permanent. And it's really super fun because it's got this sort of uh, almost Payne's gray color. It's very dark blue, and it's got a little bit of purple in it in some areas, and it's really complimenting that Payne's gray that I had used in the bottom corner of my page. And then with whatever kind of inky water was left in my brush, I did splatter that across the page. Now the only thing that is important to keep in mind during this process is that these are water reactive and they stay water reactive. So even if I dry it, if I were to come back with a brush, it would pick up that paint again. Since I kind of doled out the edges of the circles while I was using the water, I did repeat those, just went over them in the same exact places with, another, with an elegant writer. And then I'm going to kind of scribble hand right around the edge of the circle. And you can write anything you like, of course. Um, I kind of always stick to the same thing, something about my mister. And then I'm going to get out that heavy gesso again by Blick with the palette knife. I'm going to have a very thin layer on the back. And I'm just going to kind of scrape it around some areas just to kind of pull everything together. And it's also going to highlight some of the beautiful textures that I have going on. But keep in mind, when you run it over where you used your elegant writer, it will pick up some ink. All right. Thanks so much.